Um, first of all, I, I want to thank Sean uh, uh, very much for the opportunity to come here. Um, all right. Yeah. It's, it's, always, it's always great to be in Stratford. Um, I went to school here, Stratford Chef School, and I met my wife here. Uh, so, so far, all the good things in my life have come from Stratford. So, uh, so it's kind of a, an auspicious uh, start here to my new business to be invited here to Stratford. And, um, and I also want to thank Sean for, for taking a leadership role in something that's very important to me and I think is increasingly important to, to any thinking person. And that's um, a sustainable approach to seafood. And um, it's something that in North America I think we're going to hear a lot more of in the next uh, two to five years. The big corporate players are all about to jump on the bandwagon, Costco and Walmart and blah blah and McDonald's is already hooked on something or other. And um, uh, they're going to start to, to really bring the conversation forward. But at a sort of a corporate um, buzz level. And uh, I'd like to just take a minute and talk about maybe a little bit more down to, down to earth or grassroots uh, thinking on sustainability. Um, there's a book written by a fellow named Terrace Grasco from uh, Montreal, actually. And I'm very proud that I think the best book on seafood sustainability is written by a Canadian. And his work, I think, is really um, the thing that drives my thinking on sustainability. And it comes right back to my thinking on vegetables and on beef and on just about any other uh, component of our, of our food. And that is small kind of works and big is generally doesn't work. And for me, sustainable seafood is seafood that's caught by small operators in not necessarily traditional ways. I'm not a big fan of sort of you know, nostalgic and caught, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's, there's the technology's there, and that's great, we should use it. But if the scale is small, the operator tends to not have the ability to really do a lot of damage, and that's kind of a good thing. The other thing that's really important is that they've got skin in the game. And, and when I say skin in the game, it's, it's their livelihood, and it's very unlikely that they're going to abuse a resource that they depend on. Once that control of the, the choices of fishing fall into large corporate hands, um, those factors aren't there anymore. They have uh, an incredible industrial capacity to, to do damage in a very, very short period of time. And, and there isn't the moral compass to say stop and to, to slow down and stop harvesting. And, uh, and I think ultimately those are the, the principles that drive, that drive my thinking on sustainability. So tonight, um, you know, we're doing a menu that features a lot of OceanWise product. Um, I'm a big fan of OceanWise. Uh, OceanWise, for those of you who don't know, is a program that's operated by the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, it's modeled after a program that was uh, developed by the Monterey Bay Aquarium called Seafood Watch in the United States. Gosh, I don't know how long ago. Seven or eight years ago, I think, Jamie Kennedy and I were very fortunate to be invited to, uh, I think, the very first um, conference by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Um, we represented Canada at that time. Um, in uh, an international conference that began a conversation about what chefs and restaurateurs could do to advance the, the notions of sustainability. And I'll, I'll be totally honest, that was really my first look at just how how sharp the precipice was. And it was listening to a lot of um, dialogue from, from marine biologists and scientists who, um, who were, were telling some pretty dire stories. And, uh, and, and it was that that kind of brought me to the point where I said, wait, you know, we, we really do have to stop and look at this. We live in landlocked, landlocked, but in, in the interior of the country, we don't, we're not a, we're not a, a maritime culture in Ontario, um, so it tends not to be top of mind for us. We, we think that the planes will continue to deliver seafood uh, at our at our request forever. Um, my in my life, I had an opportunity to live in Nova Scotia for seven or eight years, 
at a time when the cod fishery had gone into decline, and I saw the devastation in, in small fishing communities in, uh, throughout the Maritimes as, as people's jobs and livelihoods disappeared, and, and a way of life disappeared forever. So sustainability for me is, is, is about species, it's about communities, it's about, it's about fish processing plants, it's about businesses, restaurants, fish and chip places, uh, seafood importers, fish stores. It's, there's a whole, whole line of sustainability in this. I have a five and a six year old and it, it, um, it, it really pains me to think that I'm eating things that they may never have a chance to enjoy as adults. They enjoy shrimps and oysters and everything now, which is good. <laughs> but, um, but as adults, at that that some of these things might not be here, and um, I uh, I have an, an enormous burden of guilt on my shoulders to do something about that. So so that those uh, those resources are, are there for them. So it's things like tonight, tonight and uh, these uh, opportunities to bring focus to it are really really important. Um, at the end of the day, the governments are not going to solve this for us. Um, it amazes me that with all of the levels of government who presided over the collapse of the, the, the cod fishery, that, that it collapsed. Everybody knew it was happening and, and stood by and watched it. And we're, we're watching the same thing with bluefin tuna right now. Um, everyone in the world knows that you know, sort of the last bluefin tuna is probably in the water now. And, uh, and it'll be in a refrigerator sometime in the next, uh, you know, some estimates are the next two years, but you know, it could be 10 years, whatever. But it's, it's, it's a very, very short period of time. And, and yet the quotas are increased and there's you know, very little being done to, to, uh, to police it. Um, so everyone needs to make their decisions when they buy at the store, when they order in restaurants. Um, that's where the power is. And, uh, and I implore everyone to, to, take, to take that power and to help make you know, the right decision so that, um, so that we will all have a safety. So, <laughs> um, now, on the bright side, there's, um, there is really, really great things happening. Uh, I opened a little store in Toronto uh, a week ago. And um, one of the things that, that, um, that we do is we sell a lot of lake fish. And, um, it hadn't really occurred to me, but almost no one in Toronto sells with lake fish. So you can go to the seafood stores and the grocery stores, and you've got fish from all over the world, but um, they tend not to have a lot of lake fish. And um, it, it just never really, I, I didn't think about it a whole lot. We just put lake fish uh, you know, as part of our, our, our product line. It's something that I grew up with and, and, and have a deep love for. Um, the response from the public for lake fish has been absolutely uh, overwhelming. I cannot believe how many people just stream into the store saying, oh my god, you have lake fish, and, and walk away with lake fish. Our lake fish is in pretty good shape. Uh, the, the, the Great Lakes, um, I think, are one of the great success stories, and something that we probably don't celebrate as, as uh, heartily as we should. Um, I'm 51 years old now, and I, I, I went through those, those years when the Great Lakes were a toxic pool, and, Mm -hmm. and it was all the stories about don't eat fish in the Great Lakes because of the mercury and, and the Love Canal and all those those great those uh, those great tragic stories. But a lot's been done, and the Great Lakes are uh, are improving daily, and uh, and the fish coming out of the Great Lakes are in good shape. The um, we fish we take our fish from the southern basin of Lake Huron. They're very heavily tested by uh, both U.S. and Canadian governments for mercury and PCB levels. And they're coming in at, at ten, well, at actually five percent of the allowable level, the allowable level, the, the minimum level for the um, And uh, and I think that's a huge success story that, that we should all uh, take take pride in, because it's important to understand that we've done that, so we can uh, succeed in other areas as well. We do have the power to do it if everybody focuses on it. So those are great. Those are great stories. There's sustainability there. The BC and, and uh, Alaska fisheries are very, very well managed. Um, so there's some great options there. Shellfish, oysters, um, all almost all shellfish that we're eating these days, mussels, oysters, uh, increasingly scallops, um, are being farmed. Um, farmed shellfish is uh, farmed shellfish is good. Um, they they require no feed. 
So it's not like someone's going out harvesting uh, another species and feeding it to the shellfish. They don't get antibiotics or other weird uh, inputs. And by their very nature, they're filters. So they, they, you know, just by virtue of their existence, they help to, to purify and clean the waters. Um, so I think I encourage everyone to eat more oysters and, and, <laughs> and clams and scallops and mussels and uh, and make that a huge and make that a part of your diet because um, uh, Canada is developing a very very strong uh, industry in shellfish, whether it's mussels, oysters, or scallops, and. Uh, and all of every every bite we take there is, is a step in the right direction. It's a sustainable uh, fishery. It's something that's very high, it's very new, uh, nutritious, low in fat. It's got all it's got all the right things happening for it, and it's sort of, it's good for the planet. So uh, I think everybody should do their duty and so eat some shellfish. <laughs> <laughs> that's really all I wanted to say tonight. I uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, it's uh, it's good that Sean told me I can only speak for ten minutes because I can go on for hours. <laughs> get increasingly uh, agitated about yeah. the subject, so um, uh, I'll just end it there as a little happy note on the shellfish. So uh, thank you very much, and um, it's been a real pleasure to be here. Okay. Thank you.